um, uh, just quick comments. One, the mandate of this committee when it started out was Greater Beulah, excluding OLFA. So I want everyone to remember that. And uh, let's see, second, was emphasized in a meeting that the outline field aid district plan is a countywide project. Yes, that is true. It is in the Beulah community and it will affect the people who live in Beulah the most. So I expect that to be taken and to be Any other community would expect that. Third, I've just been wondering, why can't we have outlying field eight open in the meantime so that people can at least hike it, walk it? What would be, uh, what is the, why not? That's that's my question. Uh, even if we just, well, it is mowed. I mean, you know, uh, people go to our parks, you could say that's a liability. And I can hear that right off. So uh, just a question, why not let people walk around there? Um, you can kill any construction starts, which could be years from now. All right, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Teresa. Anyone else would like to speak for public forum? All right, Dr. Bryant, no more speakers for public forum. Board members. I will open it up, but I just want to say thank you for all of you um, being patient with us and, you know, continuing to be involved in this project. I'd like to thank the commissioner, uh, members of the public for showing up, you know, after um, at time after time for all the meetings that we've had and continuing to be present and, and help us with this project. Um, and so I just want to give everybody kind of an update of what, what the goal is for the meeting today. We won't be making any major decisions. This is just kind of bring everybody back together, um, bring us up to speed and where we are now. I know we haven't met for several months um, and just kind of get a quick overview of where OLF8 is um, currently and where they're moving. As we've previously discussed, OLF8 really has to get going and moving forward before we can kind of make any of our decisions because we want to try and marry anything that we do with OLFA. So the goal is really just for us to take in some information that's going to be uh, presented to us and um, then just kind of keep that in the back of our mind. And then as soon as we have any, any more information or anything changes, then the goal will be for us to get back together and, you know, kind of start moving forward on our process. So I'm going to open it up to my board members. Does anyone have anything they want to add or say at this point? No, Laura, I'm interested in hearing, I guess, the county's next steps. We may have some commentary after that, but nothing for now. All right. Well, if nobody has anything, um, I believe there was an issue with the minutes. Is that correct? I don't yes, I, that I is correct. Okay. So we do not have the minutes from the last meeting to approve. So we will push that forward to the next meeting. Uh, the next item will be the library update. So um, we just had a meeting, a library meeting, and there was an issue with some signage right outside of the site of the future uh, Bellevue Library. We did get a new sign. Up. I'm very happy to report that. Um, the project is moving forward. Mr. Humble has met uh, several times to try and finalize the plan uh, for the library and kind of get something solid so that we could share with the public so they can see, you know, what, what hopefully will be coming soon. Um, and then as soon as we possibly can, again, given the current circumstances, you know, the, the COVID situation, things, you know, may not move as quickly as we would like, but uh, he has been working, I know, with, with the commissioner and and with us on the board to try and move things along as quickly and safely as possible. As soon as we have anything more definite, um, especially to share with the members of the public or with you guys, then I will definitely let you know that. 
so I think, Commissioner, did you have anything that you wanted to say before we move into the oil of aid update? Uh, yes, I did. Just briefly, I want to make sure that everyone knows at our last meeting, the um, uh, County Commissioner's uh, full board agreed to front load the money, the money that we were that we are going to use to do the master planning of, uh, of the greater Beulah area, our study area was $300,000 and it was a Restore Act uh, ask. Um, it's been approved, but it's held up in the bureaucracy. So uh, Commissioner Barry, the chairman uh, and I were uh, talking at a meeting and moved the idea forward that that money is gonna be fronted because we know it's coming, it's gonna come. So the money to fund our um, overlay or master plan, whatever we do for our study area is going to be available uh, within the next two weeks. So that's, that's a piece of good news that I wanted to report to the board. We've been meeting for over a year now. That was always the, the wild card. When were we going to get the money? How are we going to pay for it? But we were able to move it through uh, and within two weeks, we're going to have that money. So the next steps that we're probably going to be uh, talking about are, are putting it out to bid and getting a, uh, um, getting a, a firm to do it, but we've got the funding now. So I just wanted to report that to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Bryan, that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, okay, if no one has anything else, can we move on into uh, Ms. Barry? You're gonna give us uh, the oil update, I believe. Um, before she does, Jay, uh, Jay from the committee had one thing he'd like to wanna, you wanna grab the mic. Oh. The only, the only comment I have is, uh, do we have a roll call of who's uh, present uh, person and virtually? So. I took roll, I just didn't call it out. Okay, I just, I just I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, both board members were present. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got it between the recording and what's written. Thanks, Jay. All right, Terry. Is Terry up now? Yep. I'll put it, I'll put it, the work away from Hunt's job. Hello, can everybody hear me? All right, this is gonna be a little different for me. I'm not used to holding the mic and, and everything, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, before I get started, uh, I want to introduce myself because a lot of people don't know who I am. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself and then we'll go right into the presentation. First off, my name is Terry Berry, and I thank my husband for giving me my rhyming name, but his name is Gary, so we're the Gary Terry Berry family, so it kind of all works together, so so uh, that, that makes it nice. Anyway, um, my background is, is I've got 20 to 30 years experience in aerospace and nuclear engineering, and I've also worked as a, as a division manager for the Department of Environmental Protection over code enforcement. And then I've been with the county about five years doing project management. And so I've been asked to do the OLF um, project manager, so I'm excited about doing that. And my role on this project is really just to check budget, schedule, make sure everyone is communicating together, and all those kind of things. If anything goes wrong, it's my fault. So I'm not going to blame me. We take that right up front. Um, also on our team, we got Brent Whiff, which is actually here with us. Day. He's the division manager, and he's going to be actually looking over all of our any wetlands or environmental impacts we have. Plus, he's trying to keep me in line because he's my direct supervisor, so that's, that's his biggest task. I also have John Fisher here with us. He's going to be doing the zoning and planning portion to make sure that we get zoned correctly. He's going to be looking over and making sure that everything meets our land development code, so then we do start implementation, everything done smoothly. That's our county team. I'm really excited about it. So we have a really good team together. Now, if you flip through, CPC is the co-design is who we've hired. The county is hired to do this master plan. We've got two project managers that I work with on a daily basis, and that's Marina and Mike. And they have assembled a huge team of professionals. We've got one local company here, it's in, uh, Impact Campaigns, and they're doing our stakeholder engagement. And actually, Travis is on, on uh, the Zoom meeting today, so mm -hmm. you'll be hearing from him shortly. And then we have other professional uh, groups they put together that's going to be handling all of our market analysis, traffic analysis, civil infrastructure analysis, and those kind of things. So we've got, they've got those teams going, and they're starting to look at that kind of data. 
Okay, let me ask them, where are we? What are we doing? What have we been doing? Well, I issued the notice to proceed in May this year. So in since May, we've had a uh, kickoff meeting with the Board of County Commissioners at the uh, one of our Committee of the Whole. There, we explained the what the team was, we introduced the team, we told them what our schedule was gonna be, what our goals are, and those kind of things. So we got, every, got that started. Following that meeting, we actually had a technical kickoff meeting. And there at that kickoff meeting, we actually met with all of the subcontractors and found out roles and responsibilities and, and that kind of thing to know what everyone is doing. We got to meet them, they got to meet us, and then we started the ball rolling. Right now we're in the hey, phase. Hey, hey Terry, let me, yeah. let okay. me interject. If um, someone can turn on the screen sharing, I'll share the PowerPoint slide. Jeff, you so have to share the along. screen. How do, okay, hang on. There's a button, a green button at the bottom. It says share screen. Okay, yep. That'll share my screen, not his screen though. You're the only one, you're the only one who can give us that permission. Oh. If you click on the, the little arrow there, you have an option to. Oh, okay, all panelists, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, got it, it's done. You should be able to do it. Here we go. Can I see? Here. Yes. It looks good. Mine it looks good. Thank you, Travis. We have it here in our room. So this this is good, good, so they can see it as well. Yep. Good. You now you get to see all the faces of the DPC team that we're talking about. And on the, on the Next page, we're talking about where we are today. Right now, what we've been doing is data collection and the county has been providing all kinds of data uh, to DPC to analyze. We've got traffic data, we got market data, we got GIS data. I've talked to every department, I think of the county right now trying to get data. Uh, right now, the team is actually analyzing that data. They're identifying any data gaps that we may have and we're trying to get those uh, gaps them if we have it or we're trying to find that gap. So that, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, so they're doing all their market analysis, they're doing all their findings. We're hoping that on in August at the committee the whole meeting, I think it's August 13th, we actually want to present those findings. Now we won't be a hundred percent done at that time, but some of the analysis is going to be like 80 to 90 percent right around there, but we want to go ahead and present what we have so far, because tentatively we have a charrette that we'll talk about a little bit later, scheduled for the end of September. So we want to present the data that we have, and then we'll be finished it up and be done with that data by the time we have the charrette. Once we finish all this data collection, we're gonna move into the scenario planning portion of the job, and then we'll do, be doing our implementation strategy. So we have a schedule that you can See, a little bit of a eye chart, <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to briefly tell you what it is. Each phase is roughly three to four months. So we're expecting to have this project done in February, March, 2021. So that's, that's our goal. Right now we're tracking right on schedule. We haven't had any major hiccups to slow us down. So we are pushing forward with that schedule and hopefully we'll be able to maintain that pace and, uh, and be able to finish on time. I want to talk about, I think everyone here knows where the project location is at, where OLF is, eight, is located. I just wanted to give a little bit of history. That was a 60, 640 acre track where we sold 100 acres to Navy Federal Credit Union. So that gives us 540 acres to play with. Now, some of, those, some of that acreage, I'm not exactly sure how much is wetlands. That's what Prince going to make sure that we don't impact. We'll be trying to protect all of those wetlands that we can. And uh, so the rest of it, we will be actually looking at to be able to utilize. All right, next we have our stakeholder engagement plan. And I'm gonna let Travis speak to this. this he is our stakeholder engagement uh, guy that's going to be doing all of our stuff. He's got a lot of exciting things to talk about. So I'm going to let him talk about these next two slides and then I'll come back up and talk about the rest. 
Great, thanks, Terry. And uh, thank you, Commissioner Bergosh and uh, Dr. Bryant, members of the committee for letting us, letting, letting me uh, zoom in, no pun intended, and uh, tell you a little bit about what we are working on as the project team. Again, um, I'm based here in Pensacola. Uh, my firm has uh, been involved with public engagement and uh, issue advocacy and marketing efforts around uh, the area for the past 15 years. Um, we do a lot of outreach and community engagement on projects like this. Um, it's something we really enjoy and we try to focus as much of our time and energy in getting the right people and as many people in the room, whatever that room is, sometimes it's a virtual room but we really work hard to make sure that, that citizens have access to the policy making process. Uh, we believe when, when citizens and government work together, the outcome is always a better one. Um, so the first thing to talk about is kind of the whole idea of COVID-19 and how that's changed and kind of reshaped how we approach community engagement. Typically, community outreach or public engagement was done in person, in a room, at some location relatively central to the community um, uh, in question. And it's an hour or two, or as the commissioner and others know, sometimes several hours of public conversation. Well, now with the COVID-19 um, public health concerns, we're, we're rethinking the way we're gonna do public engagement and outreach. And the, the good side to that is it's actually forced the uh, development and adoption of some new technology that really has the opportunity to expand our overall reach and the level of engagement for this project. Um, if you think about it, um, you know, we're all able to meet here at six o'clock on a Tuesday night, um, but it's a lot more convenient when we can do it from the spare bedroom or from the home office. Um, think about when school's in session and there's potentially, maybe, maybe not, soccer games or football games. Uh, people have church activities and just work schedules for, for people or folks who don't really feel comfortable going to, to, uh, to large gatherings. We're gonna take a very aggressive approach to, to kind of create a hybrid that allows as many people from around the, the community to participate in the project. So real quickly, as we look at, at this public engagement effort from a 30,000 foot level, there's, there's sort of four key goals. The first is to educate the, the public about the project. You all are very uh, attuned to the OLF8 project, but a lot of the community and particularly in, in other parts of the county, they're not as aware of it. Um, some people actually in Beulah just know it as the old helicopter field. So um, part of what we're gonna do is, is to explain to the broader community the opportunity that OLF-8 uh, presents as, as sort of a transformative project, not just for the Beulah area, but for the entire county. Um, we want to make sure that we're capturing a wide uh, net of citizens and stakeholders in the planning and design process. One other thing that's very unique about DPZ and the team they've assembled is they actually don't come to you with uh, a drawing and say, what do you think? over the course of these next few weeks, they're gonna be talking to neighborhoods, talking to stakeholders, talking to, to, um, to other groups that are interested in this project and developing some ideas. And, and during the course of the charrette, they will actually talk with you and interact with stakeholders, sketch out their, their drawings and their plans literally in real time and hold up the page to you and say, is this what you were talking about? Does this make sense? So they really, they really capture the idea of designing in public. And that makes it a lot easier to get real-time feedback and to really convey and interact with, with the public uh, and with citizens when we, when we create the, the, the master plan. Obviously, we wanna make sure that the process is transparent. We want to make sure that everyone feels that their voice is heard. We want to uh, really not just tell people, but actually engage in a dialogue with citizens about the project. And we want to do the best we can to align everyone's expectations and goals for the project. I know there's a lot of conversation about what should go on this site. And we think that the answers are uh, ones that we can come to agreement on 
through a collaborative process. We also believe that with 550 acres, that's almost an entire square mile. So there's a lot of space to do a lot of things there if it's appropriately designed and planned. And then finally, what we like to do with any of our public engagement efforts is actually document and measure the, the, the feedback and the public sentiment that we're capturing. So for instance, we'll show you in a few minutes on some of our, uh, some of our online platforms, we'll be capturing, uh, asking people to, to plug in their zip codes. So we can say, you know what, 50% of the people uh, who, who shared uh, an opinion about this come from the Beulah area, but you know what, 25% come from Cantonment and Molino. Another 10% come from the city of Pensacola and there's 20, 30% that come from Perdido. So we're actually able to quantify and then um, demonstrate the, the feedback and the interaction with the community. So we want to make sure that we really focus on how we measure that. Um, as far as strategy for our engagement, obviously we're having to be, as I mentioned, very nimble, very flexible based on current conditions. Um, we are literally uh, adapting every day to uh, new ideas, to new uh, platforms, to um, new ways of connecting and engaging with the public. Um, we, all, we are going to be clear on, on how we expect people to engage. This should be a collaborative process. We want everyone to be heard, but we also want this to be a process where everyone feels comfortable uh, sharing their opinions. And so in sort of this, uh, you know, hypercharged time of, of social media and online conversations, we want to make sure that, that we channel all of these ideas into a productive discussion. Um, we are going to develop a robust uh, online digital platform so that we're able to, to connect with, with citizens where they are. Um, and we want to also be creative with non-digital outreach. There are some parts of our community and some people in our community who either don't have uh, or aren't comfortable engaging online. So we are looking at additional ways to create that engagement, whether that is to have a, uh, a group meeting uh, presented at a church with some of our team members, uh, whether we're using a community center or we're um, opening up um, some additional uh, uh, portals in some of the other libraries and other kind of uh, uh, local uh, organizations that can be almost sort of like viewing areas or, or interaction uh, points for people who either don't have the technology or aren't comfortable interacting with the technology. And then finally, we wanna really maintain momentum through the project. We've, we've kind of been in a, a build up phase for the past couple of months. We're looking forward to getting started and, and uh, we really sort of focus on um, continuing to grow and educate the public and engage the public throughout the project. Um, the other big piece to this is that we are looking at as I mentioned, the possibility of some sort of a, a remote charrette. Typically, the charrette is a, a week or so of very intensive design and engagement and citizen outreach and, and sort of collaborative meetings over the course of the week. Um, we're looking at ways to, to do that virtually and, and expand the timeline of that sort of uh, design period so people have time to more time to participate, to engage, and also to mull over and to digest some of the ideas that are, that are happening because there uh, will be less in-person participation most likely. We think that's actually gonna be a benefit to engage more people and give them more time. Um, the final piece to this is we have a philosophy that, that or an approach that we like to say is, is narrating the process. So when we're talking about a, a, a master plan like this, when we're talking about a development uh, or, or any kind of public policy uh, creation, we really believe in telling the story every step of the way so that citizens and stakeholders know not only what happened yesterday and what's happening tomorrow, but also can kind of get an expectation of what's yet to come. So we'll do a lot of, hey, you may not see something happening right now, but here's what's happening behind the scenes. Um, or, you know, be thinking about ways that you might want to, uh, what you might want to see um, happen at OLF8. We'll start that conversation sooner rather than later so that we are, you know, kind of developing this conversation. I like to say we, this is almost a courtship. We want, we want to sort of introduce ourselves to citizens and stakeholders. We want to get them comfortable with us and then 
we can have to we can start having some more meaningful conversations about the project. Um, I've talked a little bit already about integrating with other communi communication tools, whether that's, um, you know, we'll have a social media page, we've got a website, we'll interact with the commissioners, different uh, various mailing lists, the county's platforms. We'll use a lot of earned media through local, um, local media outlets. We'll also uh, interact directly with neighborhood association, Facebook pages, or uh, community groups, Scambia Citizens Watch, Beulah Scoop, Beulah Scoop, I can never say that right. Um, so we'll be, we'll be sort of tracking down every channel we can to make sure we're, we're connecting with, um, uh, with citizens and stakeholders. And again, it's all about getting the maximum amount of, in, of reach and engagement that we can for this project. <clears throat> so, um, Terry, if it's okay, can I give them a quick run through on the webs on the website? You certainly can. I do want to say on this website, we're very proud of it. This is our beta release. I don't want to take still Travis is under working on it, him and Mike, for a long time. He's going to try to show you. Maybe difficult for us to see here, Travis, but uh, go ahead and, and we can see it on the little computer screen. Okay. Nice. okay, and if you have access to the um to a, a, a browser through your through your whatever you're looking at just go to my olf8.com and if you give me just a minute i'm gonna see if i can switch to that desktop one Let's see if this works okay i'm actually on the real internet now mm -hmm. okay can everybody see that i'm on the real internet now all right let me log out real quick just so you don't have to see any of our wonky back end. Okay. So <laughs> what we've done, there we go. So what we've done is uh, partnered with a um, uh, an online platform that has, and we we spend an extensive amount of time researching a lot of these these online platforms to to find the best one for this particular project, uh, and we think we did. Um, and we've integrated that into kind of a basic website format. So <clears throat> the homepage is really kind of a, a in introductory and welcome to the project. Uh, I won't go through all of this. I'll let some of you kind of uh, spend some time of it on, spend some time poking around on your own. Again, I would, I would say consider you the beta testers for this website. So um, if you see anything that doesn't make sense or can be done better, we'd love to have your feedback on it. Um, I'll make sure that I get uh, some uh, notes to, uh, to Debbie and the commissioner or Dr. Bryant to distribute, but the email address you can reach us at is team, as in Auburn Tigers, um, team at um, myolf8.com. That was for Kim. Um, so team at myolf8.com is the kind of the catch-all website. So if you see anything, feel free to uh, send us an email there. But basically, we welcome people to the project. Um, we will have a regularly updated, um, sort of the latest update posted right here on the homepage. We actually have an introductory video with um, Marina Corey, who's our lead designer, and Brooke Fleming, who actually works with me and is a Beulah native. Um, and they have, uh, they do a quick sort of, again, Zoom interview on um, what exactly is a master plan, what citizens can expect from it. And we're also going to be over the next few weeks um, releasing um, kind of who's on the team videos as well. We've got some with uh, Marina Corey, with Jeff Speck, with Peter Bazzelli. We're gonna um, basically, so, so you guys can kind of get to know who these folks are, what they're gonna do on the, on the team and on the project. Um, we also have like a little lightning round for fun stuff like, you know, what's on your playlist or what movie did you just watch recently and who's your favorite sports team and all that. So um, we, we want to make sure everybody feels comfortable with this with this team. But we again, our first phase is to educate people about the project. And this video, <clears throat> I think, will go a long way. Um, if you uh, if you'll notice, the first thing that we want people to do is to. Uh, tell us what they're thinking about and to share their thoughts. So I'm going to click on this and we've got several ideas for folks to, um, for folks to participate. Um, I'll show the map and this is a, 
pretty neat uh, feature when it works. There we go. So this is a, um, sorry, everything's slow when I'm screencasting it. This is basically an interactive map where citizens will be able to talk about things that are in the neighborhood and share a, an idea, share something that they like. Uh, you come here and click ideas and you can drop a public idea, let's say right here, that will actually allow you to make a suggestion for what could go right here on the site. This would be a great place for a really cool entry to the park. And as part of this, we'll capture all the information can't do it right now and share my screen, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but you'll be able to, to, we'll capture emails. That kind of keeps everybody from posting random things that they shouldn't post. Um, we will capture their uh, zip code so we can track where they're coming from. And if they want to, they can actually attach a photo of a similar entryway to something maybe you've seen before. Or here's the... <clears throat> You know, here's the entry uh, to Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, and this would look great uh, in front of the uh, in front of OLFA. But this is going to be, and and I think once you poke around without sort of screen sharing, it'll be a little easier to to navigate. But there's a lot of opportunities for us to to uh, capture data and feedback, and to really get some real specific uh, information from our. Um, this isn't working as well as I thought. Um, some real specific information from constituents and citizens and stakeholders about ways they want to interact. Hey, Travis, our, yes. map, our map function isn't coming up here on our screen for some reason. Okay. There may be, I wonder if there's a, a plug-in or some sort of a, a, a distraction or some sort of a, a conflict. People on the Zoom, y'all were able to see that, correct? Oh, yeah. Yes, yep. yes we yeah. did. Yes. Okay. Um, one of the other um, ways, and we're going to do several of these over the course of the um, several of these over the course of the project, is to take an introductory survey. And you might think, why are we surveying people now? There's not a lot of um, information out there. The reason we're surveying people now is just to start a conversation. Um, we want to assess what people do know or don't know about the project. But we also want them to get comfortable using this platform because we really believe that through through surveys and, and capturing this information, we can really gather a lot of engagement and a lot of great information um, to, to use in the master planning process. So here's a, you know, it's a very basic one. What do you know about OLF8? This is what it is. What do you think the top priority should be? Uh, what would you like to learn more about? How do you get your information? This is important so that we can kind of gauge where we need to target our efforts in communicating. Um, we also have, well, we have two questions that we're, uh, again, beta testing. Um, we also have a, a question to gauge people's comfort level with an in-person charrette where, you know, we'd probably have some encouragement to do some mask wearing and social distancing as opposed to a, a digital charrette um, that, um, you know, so we can kind of get people's feedback early on. And then we ask for people's zip codes so we know uh, at least where they're coming from. Um, so we're able to capture that. And then over the course of the project, we'll actually map that we'll, we'll measure this so that we're making sure we're not only getting folks from the Beulah area, but also from around the county. Um, there's another function that's not uh, quite uh, ready yet that's going to be an idea wall. Uh, have y'all seen the, I, we used to call them parking lots when I was in school, mm -hmm. kind of a whiteboard where you put a sticky note with different ideas on it. Well, we're going to uh, implement that once we get closer to the, to the charrette and that functionality will allow people to, to really brainstorm in kind of a more um, creative way and engage in sort of small side conversations about different parts of it. That's something we'll moderate. So, you know, we'll be able to say, hey, what do you think about 
uh, retail components here? What do you think about light manufacturing? What would you like to see in terms of, you know, walkability or natural uh, environmental kind of um, activities? So we'll have lots of ways to interact uh, with, with the site. And um, obviously on the participation, um, this is kind of our calendar. Uh, I would tell you this is um, close. It's not 100%. There will still be a few things that, that we're shifting around, but we do, we do anticipate the charrette being the last week of, of September. Um, and then you'll, this also helps us kind of show how the process goes uh, after the charrette um, through, the, through the presentation of, of plans and submission to uh, the commission and then obviously contact the team that link or just go straight to um, to our website um, that's basically the the engagement part in a nutshell uh, our goal will be to drive people to this engagement platform through a variety of channels social media earned media we'll use uh, Facebook advertising which we can geo target to ensure that we're getting enough um, uh, engagement from, from around the county. Uh, we will be interacting, as I mentioned, with neighborhood groups on their Facebook pages and connecting with people online. And we'll also be using this uh, through uh, some distributed um, pamphlets and stuff uh, through community centers, churches, uh, employers, so that we're able to really make sure we're capturing a wide, uh, wide variety of, of opinions and, and input. Um, one other thing that I thought I might share with you, and this is kind of um, and this is again as part of the educational part. Um, if you, I won't go to it right now, but when you get a chance, learn, um, check out the what is a charrette because it's a pretty interesting kind of uh history to the word and it and actually makes sense when you think about what we actually do at a charrette. Um, we will, I won't go through all of these, but we share the timeline which you've seen already. Uh, we talk about the master plan. This is actually where we explain exactly what a master plan is and, and what the, the, uh, how the public can interact with it. And this is actually probably one of the more interesting things that we have um, worked up. And I'll try to see if we can do one. What we did or what the project team did was to take some pretty well-known places and superimpose them onto the OLF site. So just for scale, OLF would cover from the end of Palafox Pier downtown all the way up to, I think that is Wright Street. So that is about where First United Methodist Church is in downtown Pensacola. Um, let's see, the uh, entirety of Microsoft headquarters uh, can fit on OLF8. Um, there's some actually pretty fantastic, let's see, I believe this is where DPZ's office is, where they have an entire pharmaceutical campus here, a town center, lots of uh, residential options here, all in these 550 acres. So this is really helpful and important for us to, to show what the, um, the size is for OLF8, because we believe once people sort of are able to get their minds around it, because we had a hard time sort of understanding it, and it really, this kind of uh, exercise made it real clear that there's a lot of space to do uh, some things. Okay, I got some notes here. Um, we've also got a few, uh, just some basic land use, so people know what can go where. Um, right now, OLF8 has, um, it's, the, it's a public zoning, which basically means any public purpose. Uh, and the commissioners have already talked about a, a process for, for getting the zoning uh, adapted to, to the plan. Um, I think those are the highlights. I don't want to belabor this too much. Um, I will give you some homework to uh, check out the what is a charrette uh, term. That's, uh, that's a fun one. And then we have uh, just the last page is just how to connect with uh with us it's all of us here we are and then the um you know websites and emails and all of that good stuff we'll also have a, a email the team uh, button right up here so sorry that went a lot longer because my internet was a little slower when it's storming and broadcasting <laughs>
Uh, but do you have any questions or is there anything that you want me to go over or show again? We don't have any questions on this end, Travis. So I'll go, go ahead and move on the presentation. Great, great. As you can tell, we're, we're very excited about this, this website. And I'm thinking that's going to really help with uh, engagement and getting people involved in what they're part of this process. And that's, that's the whole purpose. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, we've mentioned a lot, is the threats. And uh, as Travis said, there is a definition on the on the webpage about what a charrette is. But in my mind, it's just completely we're showing everything. Uh, right now, the team is in the process of trying to decide whether it's going to be 100% uh, virtual. Is it going to be a combination of live and virtual? Or is it going to all be live? Obviously, with COVID-19, we've got to be flexible. Uh, we're planning on trying to make a decision in August. So we're going to be looking at August to make that, that decision. Advertise, we'll get some advertising. We'll get different people to find out what we're switching. We would like to go. We want to present options. I do want to say that the DOE has done some virtual threats for other companies already. Hopefully, they have some lessons learned from those uh, threats that we can talk about and be able to fix into our threats. So, we're not the first one, but we decide to go that way. We thought we'll be contacted that they have done that for us. Um, one of the things that we have the threat is going to be a uh, top date. One of the things we do have a schedule in there. Uh, for example, if you want to, there's, there's going to be time blocked out. So you may have a two hour time block to hear about what we have for traffic, or you might have a block that's a market analysis, those kind of things. You would be able to go and actually just fit in on that part. So we're not going to ask you to go for three straight days from eight in the morning until eight at night, like I'm going to have to do. You can just pop in and out as you want to for the site that you want to see. Uh, one of the things I do want to mention is that these will be recorded. So if you cannot make one of the meetings, uh, you can just later enter your meeting. Um, the way we have the schedule set up right now, that the, the, we have Monday through Wednesday of the first week, where we'll be presenting information. We have a little gap in there. That allows people to be able to go back, release the comments together, provide comments to us, so forth and so on. And then the second week, we'll have another uh, three days of meetings and what we've found out and what we can change. So we're really excited about that. It's the last two weeks right now, September, that we've got scheduled. Um, the different color codes, as you can see on the shred, those uh, colors are actually defined on the website. So if you go look at the website, it'll tell you what each of those color blocks mean. And it'll tell you which ones are the best to sit in to watch. If you want to watch designers work live with cameras over them, you can do that. If you just want to listen to the presentation for the evening, uh, you can do that as well. So see what, what the definitions are, see what you're interested in, what topics you're interested in, and then plug into us when we get ready to do that in, in, uh, in September. And let's see what else I got on my schedule here. Hey Terry, can I can I interject one other one other thing? It's important to know. I don't know if any of you saw the work that happened that uh, DPZ did on a, a downtown project with the Maritime Park and the former uh, sewer treatment plant. Um, but but there will be a you will see a difference a progression of the project from the opening presentation through the midterm to the final presentation and and you know that's the real opportunity where all the feedback starts to filter in and ideas really get exchanged and, and drawn out so that people can kind of visualize them and so this charrette process is actually pretty awesome we saw some significant changes from the beginning to the end of the project uh in downtown pensacola because the neighborhood said hey we'd really like to have some sort of a mini grocery store right here and so the entire corner of that particular project got redesigned in the course of these two or three days, um, you know, because the community said this would be really helpful to us. So the, the, just to kind of explain that, that the, the process is, um, is very dynamic over the course of the charrette. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, you're welcome. That's a good, good point. So we're, we're really excited about that. We hope a lot of people get to in. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is deliverables. 
as a design engineer, one of the first things I would ask and give the design is, is what my outcome looks like, what are you expecting? And that's my target goal, that's how I, design, that's how I think, and that's how I handle my project management uh, role as well, is each task, what am I going to get out of it? So task one, when we finish this, when we finish task one, which is our analysis phase, we're actually going to get a diagnostic report. So we're going to have a written report of what was found uh, from market analysis, the traffic analysis, those kind of things that we actually have that we can look at and review and go back and study. And here I've got to read it several times. Um, but at least we'll have something solid in our hands to look at. Phase two, that's where we're going to be doing our scenarios. Now, it's not be one scenario they come up with. It could very well be multiple. They're going to come up with this plan A, this plan B, this plan C. Then we're going to start breaking those scenarios apart. What, what does the community want? What does the beautiful community want? What does the Tammy County want? And what does the community want? We'll start looking at each of those scenarios and breaking it apart and get the best out of the three we put together. We may end up with a four by the time we're done, but it won't just be one, it'll be several. Once we kind of identify which scenario we're going to go with, and we'll go and move to phase three. Phase three is actually going to give us the implementation strategy. It's not going to do us any good to have a plan that we're going to sit on the shelf and we can't implement. So we want to make sure that we know how to implement that when strategies are going to come in. So when we provide this and we get finished, we're going to have a plan that we can implement and something that we can be proud of. That's, it. that's the goal of the project and that's what we're shooting for. And that's all I have, so I'm going to open it up for questions. If anyone's got questions, um, let us know. Travis, I think we've worn them out. Mm -hmm. yes, um, a while one. back, just a couple of weeks ago. We'll give you the mic, that way it'll pick up there. We've got a question from Jim. Jeff. Yes. Uh, Janice Gilly just asked a question. Are they planning to be at the Committee of the Whole? August 13th. August 13th, yes. August I think, 13th. Yes, she said, I think that she said proactively they're going to be there. Okay, I'll, I'll let her know. Thank you. All right. George? Okay. Um, we can go to Robinson. We can't hear you. you got to put it closer. Weeks ago, there you go. Uh, uh, mentioned uh, putting them get on the base boards, and uh, that what does that Jeff? We still can't hear him. He, uh, well, the question is Mayor Grover Robinson put in a, a package to bring space force to Escambia County, and uh, George is just wondering where, where that would leave us. Um, and I don't know, George, if they look specifically at this site. I mean, I'm all sense, right? But I, the question was about the space board. Okay, thank you. It sounds funny every time someone says space board. I, <laughs> well, I was in space industry, so I kind of like it. I, I like it. <laughs> All right, any, any other questions? I think Teresa Blackwell. I think uh, Teresa's going to have a question. Are you going to speak through the mask? Oh. There you go. Just got to talk real loud, loud, projectable. Okay, loud. Loud. I never realized it's not softly. You do. But, um, anyway, um, so in your introduction, you said something about. Uh, there are actually 25 acres of wetlands. That's a rough number. We, so I guess you'll do a survey. But you said then um, we will utilize the rest of that. Plus woods, it's uplands, and you know I'm a that's a that's a resource for us. I think we retain those those trees, and it's a great resource for the community. There's trails and all right. Back in there, it's beautiful. Um, there are clearings, like around the clearings. It, it's, a, it's a valuable asset that the community is going to come here from Citrus and said, uh, you know, you've got something like that and capitalize on it, you don't tear it down, you don't build a baseball field on it. So I just wanted to put that thought.
want to ask another question, but unless you want to clarify your eating laws. Um. <laughs> Commissioner, could you repeat the question? Or yes, it was. More, yeah, it was. It was more of a statement. Uh, Teresa Blackwell essentially stated that of the roughly 125 acres uh, that are uh, that are wetlands, uh, uh, there's some there's some wooded uh, portion of that that's uplands that's wooded, and her purpose is that the trees not be cut down and that we save the, the, the maximum number of trees okay. as as an asset. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, I agree with you. We're also looking at recreation trees. So trees in different areas, very recreational areas with, with uh, trails and, and sun and what trees are that what are Yeah, if we can't hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just uh it, it's just difficult because that, that mic is not as loud as uh as that. So um did you wanna I, yeah, can you hear me now? You just gotta okay. speak real loud and probably right. better. All right, what I'm talking about with utilization is our areas that have trees and stuff, very well may be a recreational area. And so that is one of the things we've been looking at. We've been asked about trails, we've been asked about parks, and obviously saving trees would make an ideal place to do that. That is something that the DCC team will be looking at. All right, uh, I think that's, is that about it? Yeah. All right, uh, Laura, Dr. Bryan, I guess we're gonna move forward now. Thank you, Terry. Do you want me to have Christine come and give a graphic report? You have to speak very loud. <laughs> I'm Christine Fangie. I'm the new transportation engineer in the engineering department for Kings County. So excited to be here. This is my first C1 meeting. So thank you for having me. Um, a little bit about me, Terry herself. Um, I've got 21 years of engineering experience and transportation planning experience. Um, I worked 15 years out of Auburn University um, in the private sector, all over um, doing rural, urban. Um, city, county, um, all kinds of work. And then my passion in 2013 to design livable cities and counties. I decided I wanted to go to the public sector that, uh, so that we have more livable communities um, through and providing people more opportunities for decisions other than the car. So um, I have that in my pocket if we need it. Um, and I'm excited to partner on both Uh, yes, I believe everyone has a copy. So I put together a list of the projects that um, SDOT so gracious to this in District 1. Um, of course, the biggest project on the list is our Nine Mile Road project. It's a $13 million investment by the state to um, improve the flow along Nine Mile Road. Of course, it's been hard. <laughs> I don't live up here, but I understand from a lot of people that the construction is taking a long time. Yep. I did speak with them yesterday and they promised by May of next year. We have a little bit more to go, but- um, Now, Christine, let me interject. Sure. The last time we had an update, it was summer of 2020. Yeah, it was supposed to be November of last year, then it was March, now it was summer, and you're saying they bumped it all the way to May? So that was the conversation completely done. So um, wow. let me circle back with them and see if it's, what yeah. that means. Exactly. I don't, I'm not killing the messenger, but that's very, very disappointing. And no, can we, can we please open the portion at least in Navy Federal, instead of doing a little over here, a little over here, let's, cause once we get that, that's the 90% solution. Right. And I've talked to Mike Lengo about that. Please just concentrate the forces and get it to maybe to Heritage Oaks and get it past the Navy Federal campus. The rest of it can wait. All this stuff they're doing down here, but there's any way to do that. 
because it's been killing us out here, right? Am I right? Am I right? I believe I've heard that it will be well done in the um, winter, but if you have to the landscape after that, it could be hard. Oh, well. That's okay. Yeah, do that. I don't care about that. Yeah. I just want I want to run driving my car. <laughs> Thanks exactly. for that, Don. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're quoted. <laughs> um, another project, um, Michigan Avenue. I'm not sure if that's this area, but it's a D1, yep. and um, that's basically a quick safety project um, that'll be completed. I just pulled this month. Yep. So um, that'll be two disclosures. They told me they'll do them at night. And all in the single lane. So Fantastic. There shouldn't be any traffic. That one. Uh, Mobile Highway is designed. So I broke these out into construction design and planning just so that we can understand that every project has phases and they take a while. I'm sorry, but yes, that's how do. we do things and that's how they get through the system and they get, they get constructed finally. <laughs> um, so Mobile Highway is in design, it's 20% design. Uh, the final plans are expected next year. Um, and then the is funded um, to be in May of 22. So yep. that's coming. Um, it'll be a nice project. Mm -hmm. So here, the next three projects in the planning phase. So, of course, our fuel list PI is the big one. Uh, that one, um, the planning element. The next phase is to do a big public meeting, public hearing, um, as that term. And that has been pushed, unfortunately, because of COVID. Um, they're saying because of the federal funding tied to that. Um, they can't do a virtual meeting. They mm. have to do it in person. So that's in October. They uh, mentioned that we are looking at hosting that October for the 12th at Pine Forest. Um, and it, that one, they're trying to also pair the Buell Road improvement plan with right that on. meeting. So it's a one meeting. So I encourage all of you to be there and tell your friends. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and make sure everybody's there. Um, I'm sure <clears throat> it's still in the time that we are right now, it'll probably be Unfortunately, but um, we'll keep sure the commissioner will keep everyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Eula has funding for uh, design engineering. That's obviously, I expect it to follow very quickly behind the planning stage. So that's funded, but then the construction and right away is not funded. funded. We're still fighting so for that. The good news is, during is funded. That's good. <laughs> But it'll sit for a minute, and then we'll have to, to get that prioritized um, so we can make that happen. Deal um, Road, uh, I mentioned the public hearing is in October, and that that'll finish the planning phase in the summer of next year. And the engineering and the construction are unfunded on Deal Road. I'm sure the OLFA project will sit as well. I think we'll have good um, discussions about Deal Road. Public outreach. So I'm excited that those big partners together. And then the last one I have on here is a study um, on Nine Mile and Rebel, right outside the doors, right here. My understanding is that FSA did a study and that a signal was warranted. Correct. I'm not sure if that. Do you know more about the funding? I think the funding we have to identify. The funds haven't been identified. The signal was warranted. That, that's the last I heard on that. Is the state said if they're gonna. Well, it's their road, right? So, yeah. okay. Let me push on that one. I put it up, but I need to. But I mean, if we got to, if we got to put a little local money into it to make it happen, because I know it's important, right, Will? You need that. I mean, that's a real important. A lot of kids live across the street and walk, and for whatever reason, they won't let us live. It's been a big battle. I'm, I'm working with Kevin, he's my counterpart on the school board, and we get that done. So, yeah, whatever you could do on your end on that would greatly appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. That's all I had. Any questions for for Christine? Any questions from the panel, Christine? All right. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you thank for you. having me. Absolutely. All right. So uh, next up is uh, Director Jones and staff for the next steps in our processes. Drew, is Dr. Bryant still on the meeting? Is she still on the call? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, Drew. So, former development service, obviously not Director Jones. He couldn't be here tonight. Okay, things are speeding up now. All this time we've been working. Um, the commissioner was able to work on this side of the funding, the, the 
call it inter, inter, fund, inter fund transfer. transfer. We need to get moving. So we've got the RFP that includes the scope of work and the deliverables that you'll help to craft at the last meeting. In February, I think. Correct. So, <laughs> Jeff. Yes. Yeah, Debbie. We just can't hear him. Oh, oh. Just, just, come, just come over here, Drew. Okay. Back. You should just sit, yeah, you sit right I'll here. sit right here. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Drew. Drew's going to come closer. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so I was just saying, the RFP with everything we need to submit for the Greater Beulah Area Master Plan that we're looking at, that this committee's been drafting up, I've got that ready to go. Um, Matt Posner and I are going to be working together on this. It's basically going to be two things happening. One, um, I'm going to work on getting this into the hands of purchasing so we can get in their queue and get things lined up to go with them. The other is Matt is going to take the, the RFP that all the committee put together and he's going to use that within the next week or so he's going to go ahead and fill out the application, the draft application, to, and get that to Treasury Department. So knowing their timeline, the fact that we have this interfund loan means we can get moving quicker. So that's, that's where we are now. We're, we're at the point of getting all this stuff ready to be bid out and ready to go and waiting on Treasury to go through their bureaucracy. And that's the update. Any, any questions for Drew? Hey Drew, it's Kim. So with that process, when do you expect to see the RFP go out on the street and how long are you guys gonna allow for responses? I'm going to leave that up to our purchasing folks. They're the ones who handle doing those. Uh, but I'm going to get this in their hands within the next couple of days so that on their list of things that need to be done, I, I got to get us in the line right as quick as I can. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thank you, Drew. Any other questions for Drew? Can we update I, I have one. Yes. Hey Drew, um, it's Joey. Um, how does how does that timeline fit with what's going on at OLF eight? How do you see us? Is it you think it's working out to fit in the slot just right to benefit with some of the information they're gathering and providing? I think that's a very good way to describe it because y'all had discussed the whole idea of you know the elephant in the room is OLF eight and what goes on with that plan needs to be taken into account by whoever we're going to hire on this side. So I think it's good that it's basically one process is going to go through and then the next one follows right behind it, taking into account what's agreed upon uh, with OLF-8. Okay, thanks. And then um, Debbie J. Uh, Ingwell just asked if we can update the plan of action and milestones, the program, to include the, the latest information from tonight. So we need to go that, ahead and do that. Okay, Drew has that document. Oh, do you have that document, Drew? Okay. <laughs> I've, got, I've got one of the older copies. I can update it. No worries. And can we send that out to everyone once you've got the draft completed, Drew? So, yeah, what I can do, it, well, so all I did with the one y'all agreed upon was just re reformat. Remember, I had the lines spread out, line numbering, all of that. I took that off, put on page numbers, and it's on the appropriate letterhead. We can send you that, and we'll also send you the updated plan of action. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure thing. Thank you, Drew. All right, committee, um, that's, uh, that's it for Drew. That brings us almost to the end of the agenda, but next step is uh, our next meeting. Um, Dr. Bryant, I'm thinking uh, first week in August. Uh, what, let me know, Debbie, 
Dr. Brian, do you want to work that with the committee, Debbie, and then send an email out? Um, yeah, I will. I'm, I'm looking right now to see if I see anything. Give me just a second, please. And Commissioner, are, are we going to continue doing the virtual meetings for those of us that need to uh, more or less shelter in place since the yes, governor has also given us permission to do it? Okay, good. Abs absolutely, and, and we'll work out the kinks. We had a storm come through, that's why earlier it was, and we'll work out the kinks, but yeah, we'll, we'll do it, absolutely. Sounds good, looks, thank you. According to your calendar, it looks like the first Tuesday in um, August would be fine. Does, does the committee member, any of the members have any issues with that date? That's good for me. So we're talking. It works. Okay. I'm good too. Can I have a, a moment of personal privilege, please? Sure. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if the rest of the people uh, at the school can hear me or not, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that Charlie Gonzalez, um, y'all know who he is. He was the person, the GIS person who did our maps and was such a precious and lovely individual, passed away January 17th, very suddenly. And he was such, such a nice person to work with and so good to Commissioner Burgosh and to me and to the committee and always had such a wonderful smile on his face and was the most helpful individual I think I've ever met in my life. But the, but the sunny side of this is that, I, I don't know if you guys noticed it in the paper or anything, but the new artificial reef that's just been installed has been named after him. He was a surfer and um, mm -hmm. brother said at, our, at the meeting where we uh, gave a proclamation to him that Charlie loved maps more than anything in the world and, would, and the fact that he will now have a permanent address <laughs> on that reef nothing would make him happier. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Hey, hey Debbie, thank you for, for reminding me of that. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. That's a great idea. And he's the one who created all the big maps, the big maps that show all the development in Beulah. And yeah. he would be, he was the guy that would put on the, on the um, Eagles for us. So he's, he's been missed. He was, he's greatly missed. Yeah, just a great man. Thank you for that, Debbie. All right, You're Dr. Welcome. Bryant, anything else? Or are we uh, ready to uh, adjourn this thing? <laughs> I don't know. If, did someone turn off Dr. Bryant? I don't know. No, we, no one's turned Dr. Bryant off. I can see her mouth moving. I'll turn her off. Hold on. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm turning you off. Don't turn her off. Dr. Uh, Bryant, who do you want to speak for you? <laughs> she said she just messaged us. We can adjourn. Okay. We're <laughs> uh -oh, there's more. And she wants to thank all the panel. Oh, she said to me for me to it for her to thank all of the panelists. <laughs> Dr. Bryant. Thank you, panelists. Thank you. Appreciate it. This Thanks, looks everyone. like a commer this looks like one of those commercials about what happens on a Zoom meeting. <laughs> the Brady Dr. Bryant, you are Dr. Bryant, you are playing your part very well. <laughs> we should call this the Beulah Bunch. That's what it looks like on my screen. Instead like, of yeah, the Brady, like the Brady Bunch. bunch. Yeah. 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 The Beulah Bunch. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Have a good night. <laughs>